How would you like to double your traffic with just link building? Hi, I'm Jared Krause, host of the Buying Online Podcast, and today I'm speaking with Alan Silvestri, who is the founder and director of strategy at Growth Gorilla. Now, Growth Gorilla is a no BS content promotion and distribution agency for B2B SaaS companies and some other big names and bloggers out there. Now, they help help software companies that are already publishing quality content get the word out there to acquire backlinks and increase traffic and signups. Now, in this podcast episode, Alan and I specifically talk about what is a content distribution system and how it works, what it looks like, and what are the two ways that they use with their content distribution system to promote content. We talk about link building and how to choose which pages to do link building to, and there's four different buckets that Alan and the Growth Gorilla team use to choose from on which pages should be using link building to boost them up and promote their content, and then what are some of the key pages that may get you the best ROI from link building as well. We also talk talk about different types of links and how to use these different metrics to determine the value of each link. We're talking about traffic, authority, we're talking about relevancy, and then we're talking about competitors and competition as well. So there's a lot to look at when you're doing link building. We also talk about how to do outreach in a non-sleazy way. And then we move on to talking about repurposing content and how to choose which content to repurpose, how to repurpose it, where to post that, what type of posts you should be putting out there and how often. Now, this is a jam-packed valuable podcast episode in a short amount of time. Alan speaks fast. I ask a lot of questions quite fast. And this is something you may want to re-listen to if you're looking to increase your traffic just by link building. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. Let's dive in. Alan, thanks for coming on the podcast. Hey, Jared. It's great to be here. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm excited to dive into this because you just mentioned that you do work with promoting articles and a lot of people listening are wanting to buy contents websites, so blogs, and wanting to promote. Well, most people are just on the hamster wheel of actually just creating more and more and more content, Uh, whereas less content but more quality and promotion can end up getting you a better result. Do you find that like when you work with people, you slow down their content production, but put more emphasis on the promotion. Is that a thing? Mm -hmm. It's not really that we slow down the content production. If a company has the time, the resources to do everything, that's always great, right? Uh, We've seen uh, some diminishing returns once the production is way too fast compared to the promotion, right? So that's very important. And it's also why we, uh, we always say like, there's a lot of companies that have a content production and publishing team in place, uh, but not many companies have the content promotion team. So it's like everybody like keeps forgetting that that's the last piece of the puzzle and you really need that. So by promotion, I'm talking specifically about backlinks, right? So what we do is we build backlinks, but in a way that it's essentially promoting the content. So we try to spread the word out find the best possible uh, like placement for any type of content in a very strategic way as well. Because uh, at the end of the day, like, yeah, if your content is just sitting from page two and lowered, it's basically not doing much for your business. So what we uh, try to do is to solve a situation that we call the content graveyard specifically, <laughs> uh, which happens for a lot of companies. Basically, once you keep publishing content, it looks like a linear staircase, right? So you publish two articles one month, two articles the next month, and so on. So it keeps going like that. It's always like predictable staircase. The problem with content promotion is that it's more of an exponential scale. So if you like overpose the two kind of graphs, like they look very different, okay? And what a lot of people do is they get to a certain point that's right at the beginning, basically of the exponential scale. They get discouraged because they're not seeing much, like many results. So typically what they do is just quit and keep publishing and pumping out content in the hope they will magically rank. Uh, But sooner or later, they will hit that uh, content quality threshold where basically the content by itself is not going to be enough. And so typically what you need is more and better backlinks to be able to rank higher. Yeah, right. Okay, so if we're talking about content, what's the typical type of content that you're promoting? So, you know, is it a specific article is it a specific page on a website and what sort of i guess to answer that or to narrow down on the question what would be the best 
best type of content to promote? Like how does somebody yeah. go, I want to start promoting some of my content. What, how do I choose which, which type? Because yeah. some are going to get better results that filter through to other pieces of content as well through their internal linking on their site. Right? Yeah. So that's a very good question. And it's usually also problem number one that most companies have because the three main problems typically are not knowing which pages to promote number two is not knowing the type of backlinks that you need to acquire for those pages and number three is like either knowing how to do it or having a system or a team in place okay mm -hmm. so problem number one is not knowing which pages to promote that's a very common problem because uh, number one there's a lot of companies that don't have systems in place to be able to measure the uh, the roi from that content Okay, so it's very important to have something in place, Google Analytics goals, some kind of tracking, so that you're able to know exactly uh, this URL is bringing me this amount of conversion sales per month. Okay, so this could be like either signups for SaaS companies or uh, like affiliate sales for like affiliate websites, for example. Yeah. So once you have that in place, it kind of helps you already to get an idea of which pages right. are basically are the ones that are already money uh, have some potential yeah money pages so for example you have what uh like a page like in the top 10 of your top converting pages that's only ranked in position 15 so you know that if you're yeah if you can push the page up like into page one position five like top five for example that will like greatly increase uh, your revenue yeah for example say you're in position 15 and that one piece of content gets you say 300 dollars a month or five hundred dollars a month, and you get that up to you know spot number ten, you could get a thousand dollars a month or yeah. fifteen hundred dollars a month from that piece of content, right? Which means you uh, get yeah, an yeah, ROI yeah. on the on the links that you build to that page. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so what you want to do is always try to push the pages that are in the so called content graveyard, like essentially up into the other buckets, which uh, typically we divide them into four main bu uh, ranking buckets. So is uh, so number one is position one to three, right? So the absolute top best. Yeah. Number two is position four to 10. So the bottom of page one, mm -hmm. and then number three is the top of page two, uh, which is like position 11 to 15. And mm -hmm. then everything else is basically considered content gravier because from the bottom <laughs> of page two, post, like page three, there's like, you don't get much traffic yeah. if at all. Uh, so what you always want to try and do is like repeat this kind of flywheel process of pushing the pages that are top of page two into page one and then into the top three mm -hmm. and yeah, keep going like that basically. So just ascending, just ascending those that are in bucket number three, not in the content graveyard, but the ones that are in number three, yeah. get them into bucket number one. So for somebody that's got limited resources, for example, that like, hey, look, I've got thousand dollars a month I could spend on this or two thousand mm -hmm. dollars a month I can spend on this where do you start do you start with the ones that are in position you know bucket number two four to ten position to get them to one to three or do you start from the back and go from you know page two mm -hmm. to get them on pa bottom of page one yeah so it all depends first off on the type of like conversions that you're seeing from these yeah. pages uh, so it depends on two things the types of conversion and the quantity of conversion the potential in terms of business that those pages have and number two is the uh, like the rankability potential so mm -hmm. how easy it is to be able to push that page higher compared to other pages gotcha. so that depends on a few different the things the co as in the competitors and stuff like that yeah, the competitiveness yeah. of the pages they are ranking. So you can have a look at the average domain rating uh, for the other pages, the average uh, number of the referring domains that they have. So how many backlinks do the other pages have? So you know how many uh, you need uh, to get to kind of close the gap. Essentially. Yeah. So it's pretty important the way that we calculate how many links we need to close the gap. It's pretty simple. You essentially take the average of the top 10 ranking pages on page one for the referring domains that they have, right? So let's say that uh, the average is like 20 links and you have 10 links on your page. So you need uh, 10 extra links to close the gap. Uh, the second thing though, is you need to keep in mind that those pages are also like variable and dynamic, right? So chances are pages that are ranking on page one, they're also getting like new backlinks every month. Mm -hmm. So you need to also keep up with those. So you can calculate the average of uh, how many new links they're building every month. So you simply sum those up to the total link gap. So let's say that it's 10 plus maybe three new links every month. So then you, let's say you want to work on this campaign for 12 months, 
to be able to close the gap. So I need to do that three new links every month multiplied by the 12 month plus the 10 total to close the gap. And that gives you how many links per month you need to essentially build every month. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I guess the, something is variable is like not every one link has the same value yep. as well. For example, you know, you work out maybe a site needs 10 links every month, but if they got better links than all of the other ones, they could outrank, you know, a competitor. Yeah. For a certain position for that keyword, right? Yeah, that's, it is definitely true. Uh, what we try to do is we always like, we still calculate this link gap based on like an arbitrary number that we see based on the data. Problem number two, if you remember is not, is like a lot of people don't know the type of links that they need. So that's the second thing they should do. Once you know how many, then you should know what type of links you need to okay. be able to see that it's, it's basically very similar. So you kind of like reverse engineer what the other guys are doing. Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say that the top 10 ranking pages have uh, 20 links uh, like each, but then you can dive deeper into the data and see, for example, the majority of those links are links that are in the bucket domain rating 50 to 70. So that's the best possible types of links that you should prioritize. Mm -hmm. but then you can do the exact same thing with the uh, URL rating. So the strength of the specific page, uh, you can do the same with the traffic for the backlinks that they have. So you can like basically use like all of these data to be able to specifically target the best possible type of links that the other pages have. Mm. Uh, then the last piece of the puzzle, essentially, once you have all of the metrics in terms of like uh, link juice, let's say, <laughs> is uh, topical relevance. So topical relevance is the topic uh, that the pages that are linking to the competition are talking about. So you can use those to find similar pages, right, covering yeah. similar topics. Yeah. And the last thing is the anchor text. Uh, so uh, most of the times you probably won't have control over the anchor text. Uh, yeah, unless you're doing guest posting, which means that you like are controlling the anchor text yeah. for the backlinks. Yeah. Uh, but that said, in the situation where you do have some control, you can try to shoot for uh, like the average kind of numbers that the other guys are doing. So we divide the anchor text into four main buckets. Uh, number one is exact match. So that's the exact keyword. Number two is partial. Mm -hmm. That's a keyword that contains some of the word from the exact. And then we have other, which is anything else like brand term or click here, see this. And then we have a, a URL anchor text. So like a, a, the naked URL. Yeah. Okay. So there's, there's, well, man, there's so much in that. I just want to like sort of come back and break <laughs> yeah. that down for people. So basically. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you kind of tend to nerd out when I start talking about this stuff. <laughs> no, it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm following. I'm tracking, <laughs> tracking quite well. So the type of backlinks is sort of determined by a few factors, which are you know the metrics, topical relevancy, anchor text, um, exact match, you know, similar mm -hmm. um, or yeah. you know, phrase. Uh, so that's how you decide the type of. So you look at the links that the competitors uh, have to their sites mm -hmm. and work out how you can get metrics that are similar, if not slightly better or massively yeah. better, but on the same you on the same path, like the same topical relevancy with the s similar type of metrics and similar, if not better, anchor texts. Is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah basically. Yeah. It's, so it's actually three parts, right? To recap everything, it's how many links you need and how fast. Right. Yep. So for example, five links per month, then the type specifically talking about metrics. Yeah. Uh, we typically use domain rating, uh, URL rating and traffic as well, mm -hmm. both traffic to the domain, but also traffic to the page if possible. And that's a small intermission here. It's because there's a lot of websites that have recently been able to kind of fake, uh, their domain metrics, right? For example. Typically people, when they buy a website, they look at the domain rating, the traffic to the domain, or when they want to get a link from a website, they look at the domain metrics. A link that's coming from a high authority domain with a lot of traffic, but that's coming from a page that has zero traffic and zero links, it's not gonna do much for you anyways, right? Yes. So you always want to get a link from a good domain, but also from a good page specifically, because yes. that's actually probably most important uh, than a link. 
from and the and way. good topical relevancy as well, right? You don't want to have a yeah. link, so it's a high branded domain with a high DR and lots of traffic to the site in general, and then you get it from maybe a, a good page that has a lot of traffic, but that traffic is talking about something slightly different, and there's just a small little snippet or sentence in it that yeah. you, they could squeeze in an anchor text. That just to make it work so they could sell a link, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, definitely. That's not very good. And also most sites, like as it's pretty uh, kind of easy by now to spot the so-called link farms because <laughs> these are sites that have been built with the main purpose of just selling backlinks. Yeah. So chances are that we'll probably have a header, uh, like a menu header with like every single niche under the sun. So they have <laughs> business, health, spirituality, yeah. uh, food, like beverage, investing, parents, food, beverage. Yeah, everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, that's not very good for topical relevancy because it dilutes the, the link profile and everything. Yeah. And it's not very focused to what you want. So you want the right quantity with possibly the right velocity of links to keep up with the competition. Then you want the right metrics to the domain and to the page, and then the, the right topical relevancy as well. Yeah, I've also seen that um, there can be pages because a link, you'll be able to sell a link for more if you're linking from the home page of a site. And so I've seen sites that just have the whole blog posts as home page and each blog post is like only on the home page and it's just got a bunch of different random blog posts about every single topic under the sun as well. Um, yeah, I mean, that's so kind of like an old practice. It's, a, yeah. it's probably something that was like, like mostly done a couple of years ago. PBN days. Um, yeah. Yeah. PBN days, but yeah, especially in like affiliate websites, kind of niches, that's still pretty common. Have you got any examples of sites that you've worked with where you put this into practice as and 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 some case studies or yeah, from, yeah. from where it went to where it is now type thing? Uh, so I can't share the specific client name uh, just that's because fine. we signed contracts. Uh, but yeah, we uh, with a good client that we recently started working with. We are now at month six. And we've been doubling the traffic uh, like quarter by quarter. So first quarter, we doubled the traffic and the number of keyword rankings in page one, right? And second quarter, we essentially repeated the same thing. The main reason why I think this has been working as well, uh, because number one, the client, uh, they have a very good brand, right? So they're well known in the industry. Mm. Uh, this in turn kind of allow us as well to uh, do a better job at acquiring backlinks simply yeah. because we can reach out and we're like uh, because we typically reach out from the client uh, like brand right and they've got a brand so we yeah. Are, yeah yeah so they have a good brand good really good quality content as well so those are the three most important things the good brand the good content and then the promotion that needs to be done right awesome. uh, so when so when we reach out to someone also it's it's important to mention that we don't like literally pitch for a link we essentially try to like promote right so so how do you promote? You reach out to people that you think could be a good fit for that resource or that specific page. You tell them why you think they should have a look at your content. And that's basically, that's it. Like you leave it kind of up to them, right? So you yeah. can be like, I've loved some feedback. And then if you like it, feel free uh, to mention it somewhere. Uh, but yeah, that's typically what we do. We don't go actually there and say, uh, can you link to my page from this exact word in this page? Because that's really spammy. and. Not yeah. a lot of people do it. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's so annoying. Uh, and it's so the energy of it, the energy of it, I, I'm big on energy. The energy of it is just so disgusting and you can feel that the neediness of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Need, need a link. I need a link like, and, and the follow, like the follow up. And I mean, the follow up is in the fortune. It's good and it's worthy, but I think the easiest way to get a link is having the best piece of content on the subject. That's yeah. so good that people are going to be like, I can't, I can't, I can't not link to this because it's that good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's very true. And also there's a couple of other pieces to this. Uh, so the uh, number one is to reach out to the right people, uh, to the right person or like role, for example, for that, mm. because if you reach out to someone that's in the sales department, chances are they're not going to be able to do anything with that. So you want to reach out to someone that actually have uh, the ability to read the page because they're interested in, or they are able to actually go in there 
and make an edit to the page, right? Mm -hmm. So someone like the, the editor of the site or the author of the actual article, that's typically very good because they're invested into the topic. So they're interested as well. And then lastly, someone in marketing, maybe. So we always try to get started from those three positions, but typically the author first. If we can't find the author, we reach out to the editor of the site. And if we can't find the editor, we reach out to someone that's in marketing. Uh, if you're reaching out to a solo kind of blogger, you obviously want to try and reach out to the owner. Yeah. Uh, but that's the most important thing. Second is reaching out to them at the right time and also at, from the right medium, right? So email is not always the best possible place. Some people don't really check emails or they are so used to being spammed by link builders that they, yeah, basically they have a, like a mental filter. So as soon yes. as they see a, like an email that looks vaguely like a, Link building pitch. email, <laughs> yeah, they archive it. So you want to try and vary the medium as well. We sometimes use uh, social media, LinkedIn, yeah, uh, right. Twitter, and, and things like that as well. And so will you do, uh, do like reach out via LinkedIn via the person's, the author of the, so for the, the client that you're working with, will you reach out using their LinkedIn account at times yeah, or typically, social media account? Yeah. Yeah. So what we usually do is, so this is actually totally up to the client, depending what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, so, so either they create a fake persona that works inside their company. This could be the head of outreach, for example, mm -hmm. or they give us a real profile of someone real. So if they do the fake persona, then they will have to kind of create a LinkedIn profile and all the mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. And if they give us someone uh, that's actually uh, like real and existing in the companies. We're just going to use their accounts for that. So I want to talk about a uh, content distribution system. What, for people that don't know what a content distribution system, what is it? Content distribution system, uh, the way that I see like promotion covers two main aspects, right? Uh, promotion is the backlinks, but it's also the distribution. So distribution for me is taking the content that you are already producing and finding ways to spread it out across the web. So this could be either on social media, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, Twitter, like scheduling, automatic posting, but also things like, like repurposing content into different formats. So if you have an article, so you can turn it into a, a YouTube video yeah. or you can turn it into a Reddit post and things like that. So anything that essentially allows you to leverage existing content to make the most of it is kind of distribution. Yeah. Okay, great. So part of the distribution is, is um, link building and then a part of it yeah. can be repurposing. When you repurpose, are you just creating a full YouTube video of the article and linking back to the article, or you're creating just a portion of it, say the first half or quarter or a third. And then what does it, what does that look like? Is it determined on what suits the platform best? And then when you choose a platform and I'm going like very, a lot of questions deep here, like a few, few questions mm -hmm. deep. Do you look at where the market is for that particular mm -hmm. business in how they like to consume their content? I know that I, when I talk about content promotion is like some people in a certain niche don't really hang out on Reddit, but other people in another niche, they really do. Do you work mm -hmm. out where those people are hanging out and then create the content that suits the, how they like to yeah. consume the content? And then what sort of size, like quarter of an article, small snippet, what does it look like? There's definitely quite a lot of research that you need to do uh, mm -hmm. because like you mentioned, uh, like not all platforms are going to be working well for the same, uh, for like different industries or, or yeah. different topics. So you always want to make sure that like what you're doing is not just for the sake of doing it, because this is what most people do. They think that distributing is basically just using all of their social media they have to just spread out content. That's not very effective. So you really, so if you decide to do it, like you really want to do it in a meaningful way. More otherwise, focused way as well, right? Yeah, more focused way. Choose because like two of the best platforms, yeah. Because basically like, if you want to have more like ROI from this process, you need to do it in this focused way. So yeah, mm. like you mentioned, we do research. We the, the easiest way to do this is to type the main keyword that you're targeting into Google or YouTube, depending on what you're trying to do. But for example, into Facebook as well, if you're trying to mm. post on a Facebook page or LinkedIn. So uh, give it a try, uh, type the main target keyword, see what you get. And then based on that, you can decide, for example, if, uh, if I type the main keyword, 
which might be a broad topic, but I only get short posts or short videos that have like been proven to be doing well, then I know that it doesn't make sense for me to repurpose the whole article into a giant long video, but it, it might be better to just do short snippets of the specific sections or sub paragraph uh, yeah, for the because, articles. Because success leaves clues, right? Like what's yeah. winning and um, what type of content is winning on that platform? You don't need to recreate the wheel, just do what's yeah, working for others. Yeah, I strongly believe that, I mean, we're in a world that's kind of controlled by algorithms. And so the easiest way to see what an algorithm wants is, is to just see what kind of results they're providing you with. Yeah. Uh, so it's basically hidden in plain sight. It's just a matter of, of being able to take the data and use it uh, to your advantage. I know this is going to be a tough one to answer because every business is going to need a different sort of approach. But if somebody's got a budget of, you know, $1,000, 2000 up to three or $5,000 uh, per month wanting to promote their content, typically, and this is going to be an average because we don't have an example there, unless you have mm -hmm. two different types of examples you'd like to give, what sort of splits in resources would you put towards repurposing versus uh, link building? It's a very good question. I would say it depends on what you're seeing for your industry. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the other guys doing? Are they doing more uh, on in terms of social or are they being super aggressively building links? Yeah. Uh, once you've seen that and also depending on the, yeah, the competitiveness of the keywords that you're trying to rank, you know whether you should double down more uh, like on the links. If, for example, you uh, do the analysis that we talked about before, and you see that you need 50 links per month, then you know that you should like spend 90% of your time there because that's a lot of links that you need. Yeah. So you don't have a lot of other time and resources for everything else. But it also depends on the revenue potential, right? Yeah. So if you do, so if, for example, you see that by just doing a couple of like YouTube videos, uh, you can get uh, like referral traffic directly to the site that might be faster than just spending six months to try and rank a page mm -hmm. uh, so yeah that might be a better uh like thing to do in that situation like if you know that some other people are having uh, good results with that yeah so it comes back to success leaving clues seeing yeah. what's working well and don't reinvent the wheel <laughs> yeah definitely i mean uh, like on the other hand uh, the only kind of thing that we control is data, right? So mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to just make guesses or work out right. of assumptions. Uh, yeah. To me, is the best thing that we can do is just look at the data. Yeah, set yourself up for success. Speaking of that, where can people find out more about you and what you're doing? Like, I just want to say thanks for coming on the podcast. It's been so good to, I yeah, mean, thank you for so much so fast, but I don't feel like we need yeah. to just keep. We can do another, yeah, we can do another episode where we can like yeah. dive deeper into something cool. else. Cool. Yeah. Where can we, where can we send people to check out more about what you're doing? Uh, yeah. The main place is, is our website, which is mygrowthgorilla.com or I'm very active on Twitter. So if you guys have any questions on, on like anything that we talked about today, you can reach out and, and message me on Twitter. I'm at Alan G Gorilla. <laughs> yeah. Uh, got, so yeah, you can find me there. I got links to, to both of those guys in the show notes for you. Alan, thanks so much for coming on. Everybody that is listening, thank you so much for listening. If you own a blog or are about to own a blog, do yourself a favor, save this episode and re-watch it, re-listen to it again because that we went through a lot. And I want you to re-listen to it right at the time that you've just bought your first business so you can implement some of these strategies. And if you know somebody that either owns a site or is about to own a site, do them a massive favor, share this podcast episode with them. Selfishly, yes, it helps Alan and myself help more people through what we've talked about here, but also helps grow the podcast to help us help more people buy great businesses. So thanks, guys. Hey, YouTube watcher. If you thought that video is good, you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy. Or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out. It's an awesome playlist. You'll enjoy it.